Hey guys, welcome to this video. In this one, we're gonna go through code blocks and showing you how to add interactive elements such as, you know, clicking on objects, turning the cube around, those kind of things. Now, before we actually go and click on the code button, we're gonna have a look at a couple little things that you need to do before you get there. And the first thing you wanna do is obviously make sure your scene is laid out properly. If you've got objects that you wanna animate in a certain way before the scene starts, you need to make sure you right click on them and you set all your properties up here. So for example, if I want the dog to be sitting, then I simply change his animation to sit and I can move on with my life. So the two main things you need to do for your coding is you need to name your objects first of all. Now, it might seem a bit silly, there's only one dog in my scene, but imagine if I had four or five different dogs, then I would wanna make sure they all have a good name so I can identify which is which, otherwise your code gets very messy very quick. The second thing you need to do is you have to click on the code button here and you have to tick this using code blocks. If you don't, your object won't appear in the coding section and it does this to save on memory, okay? Now, show name, it's a bit useless. What it does do is it puts a name tag under your object. And typically that's just so you can, you know, keep track of your objects while you're coding. But typically at the end, you'll make sure there's no name tags on your objects. All right, so let's jump into the code block section. Start off by clicking on the code button. And we're presented with this gigantic section of the page. And we're just gonna go into code blocks. Now, if you're comfortable with Python or TypeScript, feel free, jump in and have a look. I personally prefer the code blocks for the moment, just because they're so much easier to use at the moment. All right, if I click on code blocks, you'll see we're met with this lovely interface. Let me quickly take you through what the hell is going on. So at the top, these are all your scripts. You can have more than one. I've obviously only got one at the moment. We can add more by simply clicking at the top and adding them on like that. You can then remove scripts by clicking the arrow and hitting delete. And you can rename by clicking on the arrow and clicking rename. So I'm just gonna call this script dog because everything to do with dogs is gonna be within just this script. Now, if you've never coded in block code before, the way it works is you have all these drawers down the left-hand side. If you click on them, they expand. And inside these drawers, you have all these different blocks that you can add onto your events. Events are typically this color here, that sort of yellowy orange, I would say. And if you wanna add an action to here, you simply drag it and this tooth connects to that and Bob's your uncle, you've got it. Okay, I'm gonna throw that out by simply clicking and dragging. And off it goes. So the first thing I want to do when my game starts, I would like my dog to stand up. Simple as that. So basically you need to think about what event you want to execute your code and then what actions you need to perform. So my event is this, when play is clicked. So I'm gonna to go to my actions draw. I'm gonna to go to set animation to bloop. And then in this one, I'm gonna just set him to neutral. Okay, I thought that was neutered for a second, but thank God it's not. So if I hit play to test it out, he stands up. Simple as that. Now, what I'd really like to do is get the user's attention and get them to click on the dog. And we need some way of sort of drawing the user's attention in. There's a couple of ways you can do that. You can do the dirty old trick of giant arrows that do these kind of ones, or you can have objects that pulsate. I think a pulsating dog might be a little bit strange. So what I am gonna do is I'm just going to ask the dog to get pet. So at the beginning, the dog stands up and then he says, please pet me. Okay, you'll notice that my message got too big for here. So a little text box popped out. You get a max of a thousand characters. That's pretty overkill in my opinion. Um, but yeah, he stands up, he says, please pet me. There you go, isn't that gorgeous? All right, the next thing to do now is to have it so when the user clicks on him, maybe he lies down, maybe he's like, no, it's so good. Alrighty, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump into the events draw to add a new event, okay? So the event is when the dog gets clicked. And this is simply it, the top one right here, when the dog is clicked. So let's grab that, plonk it in there. And the action is I want him to change his animation again. So we're gonna go set animation to, and we're gonna go to, Lie down, there we go. Let's make him, oh, that's so good. Hit play, please pet me. You'll notice it highlights because Coblox has already recognized what it wants to do. Click on the puppy dog, and he lays down. Okay, 
You'll notice also this text box is not going away. So what we have to do to get rid of that is go back to our actions, go back to our say box and simply delete whatever's in there. Okay, and again, there we go, perfect. So we've got a little bit of interactivity now and it's obvious that we should interact with the dog because it says, please pet me. And the most obvious thing to do is just click on the dog. Okay, now I think the next thing to we should probably try and do is after the dog has been pet, he's had a second to think about it. Let's have him walk around the cube. Let's try and get him walking forward and then down the cube. And this is a little bit of a complicated process, but bear with me. It's not too bad. What I'm going to do, I'm going to let him lie down for a second or two, and then we're going to stand him back up and then we'll move him. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my control tab and I'm going to come down to wait just here. Blonk. So once he lies down, we turn off the text box. We'll give him 1.5 seconds because that seems just reasonable. Personally, first thing we'll do is we'll stand him back up. So we'll go back to, in fact, we'll make him start walking. That seems logical. And then what we're going to do is physically move the model across our scene and use the transform tools for this. Now transforms, I'm just going to go full screen for a second, are anything to do with movement, rotation or scaling. That's what a transform is. It includes all three. And if you can see, there's a bunch that you can choose from in this thing here. So I would recommend go through each one and actually explore what is available to you. What The one I really want to use is I just want to move forward for the moment. So I'm going to grab the move forward block. Let's get out of the full screen for a sec. One meter forward in one second. That seems pretty reasonable. So let's give it a go. Let's give him a pat. He's had enough and he walked. So that there is one meter. So I reckon if we do one, two, three, maybe four, three and a half, four. Okay, let's do four. And we're gonna do it over two seconds. Otherwise this dog is gonna be like a rocket. Now that's actually nearly perfect. That's exactly where I want him because now I want the dog to go down the side and then he could continue underneath and not the back and then to the top again. It's really important to note um, that there's no automatic way to do this, unfortunately. While when you're dragging objects around, they snap to the sides. Unfortunately, there's no way to say, stay on the cube and move, mate. Okay, you've only got these options here. So to cheat, what we're going to do is we're going to make him walk all the way. We're going to rotate him and then we'll walk him down. So the way to do this is I'm going to quickly open the translation mode here. And if you look at it this way, well, I'll do these ones actually. To get into rotate facing down, I need to use the X axis, the red line. Just like that. I'm going to get him to face nine degrees down and then we'll travel down the front. So let's quickly do that. We're going to go to turn, but I want to use this one here, which is the around axis. So we'll do that. What axis are we going around? Well, we're going around the X axis. You just put a one there, a zero in the others. And then 90 degrees is perfect. That's all we need. But I'm gonna do a quick, let's try 0 0.5 seconds. And then I'm gonna duplicate this and we'll keep him moving forward. Now let's give it a go. Please pet, sit down, get up. Not 100% perfect. I'd probably have to tweak that forward value by like 0.1 or 0.2, but I'm pretty damn happy with that. So overall, I reckon the dog is almost done. I'd clean up this movement code so he gets back to where he started. Other than that, I'm really happy with that. The last thing I want to quickly show you is different triggers. And one of the coolest triggers is when you rotate the cube, you can actually trigger different things to happen. So let's quickly add a new Coblox script at the top. And we're going to jump into the merge cube section here. So full screen for a sec. If you have a look, here's your events and you've got a bunch of things that you can do. And the one that's probably the easiest is going to be when cube side is looked at. Okay, let's just do something really simple. Let's start by maybe changing the color of the grass to something different like that. Okay, so I'm gonna to have to activate Oh, it's animated grass. Interesting. I didn't know that. Big patch. Okay, code, activate. Okay, go away. And when the top of the cube is looked at, our action is, and we're looking for color. Set color of 
grass to red. Just so it's really obvious what's happened. Okay, so let's hit play. Look up and bam, we've got red grass. So that's pretty much it for the now guys. Like play around, there's a lot you can do in here. In the next video, we're gonna do some more advanced things like variables and interactions that allow us to almost make little video games within co-spaces. So thanks for watching guys. Good luck with all your co-blocks.